Good morning. Welcome to Rio Rancho United Methodist Church. Please rise as you are able and join us in singing our opening hymn. This is to the tune of Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. It's called By Your Wounds We All Are Healed. How's everyone doing this morning? That's pretty good. Pretty good. We have just a few announcements this morning. First off, book club meets tomorrow morning at 1030 in the youth room. We will be talking about the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. So I hope you can join us if you read the book. If you didn't read the book and you want to check out book club, come on along and, and just join in our conversation. We have a women's event coming up on Friday, and I hope that all of the women will plan on coming. Uh, we have a guest speaker coming. It is Alex Weatherhead, and she is the manager of e-commerce for Goodwill Industries. And she's going to come and tell us a little bit about Goodwill and their mission and their emphasis and all of the programs that they offer. And she has worked for uh, Goodwill for a number of years, uh, started in the store and worked her way up as a store manager. And, and now, like I say, she is the, the e-commerce manager, which is a fairly new program. And they keep developing new programs, so it's quite interesting. She's going to tell us about some of those. That event starts Friday. It's Friday the 10th, starts at 6 p.m. And if you would like to come, just let me know. We will serve a light supper. And then we will have our guest speaker. We also will have a devotion and, and uh, craft. And sh uh, Alex has asked that if, if you can, if you have any, and I know we all do, right? If you have any clothes in your closet that you're not wearing, they either are too big or too small. You, you never know which way it goes. <laughs> but if you have any clothing that you would like to bring, if it's just uh, clean, um, new or slightly used, she will take it to the stores. Uh, just to let you know that Abrazo Road is going to be rehabilitated. It's gotten a little messy, and so it's going to be rehabilitated. They are starting tomorrow. The project is supposed to uh, last through the end of the month, and it is from Unser to Adelia, so it pretty much is encompasses all the way we need to get here. Um, the road will be open, one lane only. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to do that, but there will be signs and, you know, you'll have to go real slow. The speed ban is already posted right down the street from us, so just uh, be on alert and, and be real careful of all the road workers. We do still have one prayer quilt up here on the altar. That is for Elizabeth Miller. If you are able to say a prayer and tie a knot, that would be marvelous. If you're watching at home and would like to say a prayer and give us a call, we'll tie the knot for you. 
A uh, lot of other things in the bulletin. Of course, we want you to be aware of everyone we should be praying for. And uh, there's more information that everybody needs. And then there's this little piece right here. It kind of flaps. And we'd like you to fill it out, tear it off, and put it in the offering plate along with your offering. I haven't reminded everybody to do that lately. So how's everybody doing? Are you, are you remaining good and faithful to God? Good. All right. So just fill out the little flappy part. Put it in the offering plate with your offering. It's good to see everyone this morning. Christ shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall not be Christ was wounded for our transgressions. Christ for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises we are healed. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord, our God, who has brought us to the beginning of another week and has given us this Sabbath of worship and holy rest, we ask that you look with mercy upon your worshiping people now before you. May we remember your works of righteousness and of love and in our humble measure feel what your divine goodness must be that goodness which continues to take care of us from week to week and from year to year and has taken care of our parents and those who came before us. But most of all, O Heavenly Father, we thank you for your boundless grace and mercy in Jesus Christ. In his spirit, may we come to you at this time with our joyful worship and obedience. God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a perfect pattern of holy and obedient living in your Son, Jesus Christ. Just as Jesus was tempted but did not sin, Lord, we ask that you, through the power of your Holy Spirit, would enable us to overcome the sins that tempt and ensnare us, so that we may have a holy Lent and serve you with joy. Lord, bless our leaders, those who lead our nation, our state, and our city. Give them wisdom and those skills and virtues that will enable them to lead wisely and carry out their responsibilities in such a way that glorifies you and brings peace and prosperity to our land. Bless all those who are called to the ministry of your gospel. Grant them great gifts and great holiness that they may be fruitful branches of the true vine, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Bless those of, uh, who keep us safe in the military, law enforcement, and fire rescue. 
Comfort and bless those afflicted by war and natural disasters. Remember, dear Lord, all those who bear good fruits for you and do good works in your holy church. Remember our friends and families and fill us with love, gentleness, and patience so that we may live with each other with a perfect heart and take joy in each other all our lives. Remember, Lord, those who are in need, sickness, or any adversity. Let the comfort of your Holy Spirit never depart from them. Give them patience and faith, and in your own good time, turn their sorrows into joy. At this time, we lift to you the names of those in need who are on our hearts. Dear Lord, fill our hearts with a deep sense of your unimaginable goodness, that our thankfulness may be as great as our need of mercy. Help us to remember that whatever we possess, outwardly or inwardly, is your gift. May your fatherly loving kindness continue to preserve and bless us as you have upheld us ever since our birth. So may your mercy go along with us all of our days. Lord, grant that after we have, by your aid, fought the good fight of faith and finished our earthly life, we may lay down in righteousness and be resurrected to the joy of heaven and the presence of your glorified Son, Jesus Christ. We ask all these things in his name. Amen. Our anthem today is In Your Presence by Ken Medema. And the publisher was kind enough to include a tacit that the congregation can join in. So you guys should all have a copy of that um, in your bulletin. So I'll turn and invite you all to sing uh, when that comes up towards the end of the song. So I hope you enjoy and are able to join us when that comes up.
Our first scripture this morning is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Our second scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 12 through 16. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, He brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Garbatha. Garbatha. It was the day of preparation for Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away. Take him away. Crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we're talking about authority today. Kim and... Greg and I were, went to San Antonio for um, a conference, um, Mission Academy. And we, we, we got a taste of authority. I, I, I know a lot of people have two ears. And I know that the people talking to us were making sense. But for some reason, The people at the airport do not listen. (laughs) I tell you, there should have been a policeman standing at the baggage claim. Uh, You know, there's only so many people that can fit around that that baggage claim place. And I was sitting there watching, watching for my, I have a very distinctive piece of luggage. I knew when it was going to come around. People would just shove me out of the way. I'm not a little girl. They would shove me out of the way to get their baggage. I didn't like that. They didn't listen to authority. And when they said, close your seat, you know, put your seat up, put your little laptop up, those poor airline attendants, almost said stewardess, those airline attendants had to go by and seat up, laptop up, come on, let's go. Nobody listened to authority. Dealing with authority can be difficult. On the one hand, it is to be honored and respected from the very basic and foundational form of authority in parents to the authority of governments in nations. On the other hand, we probably have more than enough encounters with authority where those charged with the care and responsibility for others fail in that duty. Authority is supposed to be for our good as, as God's gift for our lives and that of our neighbors. Mothers and fathers are meant to care for their children. Leaders are meant to care and provide the well-being of their citizenship. Church leaders or shepherds are charged for the good care of their flock. As such, authority serves a loving service to others, and it is something that we need in our home, society, and nation. 
But we are also aware authority can be and sometimes is less than loving and caring in its role. Remember the Roman Catholic sexual abuse cases? Last year in May, and I'm quoting from the NewYorkTimes.com, the Archdiocese of Santa Fe said it had reached a $121.5 million settlement agreement to resolve a bankruptcy case that stemmed from the clergy's sex abuse claims, one of the largest such settlements involving the Catholic Church in the United States. The proposed settlement would be used to compensate approximately 375 claimants or survivors of sexual abuse. Now, that doesn't mean all authority should be disregarded or thrown away. True, it can become a, a authoritarian or tyrannical, where the rights of people are neglected for the sake of the authority's own pursuit of power or pleasure. It can be lax, and therefore not even help to safeguard the rights of any. It can demand obedience, but not demonstrate the love of God, which is at the core of its foundation. Part of the role for those who are under authority is to exemplify the love that authority is supposed to provide. This may even be in calling the authority back to its role of service for the sake of others. In some extreme cases, this may also include disobedience to one authority for the sake of a higher authority. For example, Peter was once ordered by the civil authorities never to speak in Jesus in the name of Jesus. And he responded, we must obey God rather than any human authority. There are also similar responses to this abuse of authority and the call to higher authority throughout the history of the church as well as in civil society. One finds this powerful contrast of authorities when Jesus is arraigned before Pilate. Pilate assumes he has authority over Jesus and everyone else in the land of Judea to which he is assigned as the governor. But Jesus' authority is ever present, even in his silence before Pilate. Jesus was sent by God to redeem all of humanity. Sure, you and me, but also his critics and even Pilate before whom he stood. Even beaten and abused by this authority, Jesus puts on public display that through his wounds and suffering, even death unto the cross, the authority of God's promising mission is greater than anything the world can offer. Authority is truly right when it beats with the compassionate heart of service for those to whom it is called to serve. We can see this. When a parent shows loving care for his young child when she scrapes her knee, a government representative listens to the constituents in his charge and seeks to use power to ease the burdens of injustice, suffering, and neglect that the citizenry is experiencing. To be sure, authorities sometimes have to make difficult decisions. Even in the gospel reading for today, Pilate sought to release Jesus. Even as the critics of Jesus cried out for his crucifixion and death. 
His final concession to their wishes would seem to be what has happened time and again in history. When the victim is offered up, rendered up to the suffering for the sake of an angry mob. But by his wounds, we are healed. As Jesus makes his way to Golgotha, the place of death, we see the contrast between the authority of law and the authority of the gospel. The gospel, that authority, is ultimate and final. When Jesus spoke from the cross, it is finished. He meant all the judgments of the world, even the judgment of death itself is now rendered mute. However much the authority of the law may hold us accountable to death, death itself is conquered by the one who bore it for our sake so that peace and life, restoration and hope are the final word God gave for us. The authorities of this world cannot stop the beating heart of this promise. To say Jesus did not obey authority would be totally false. He did obey it. He accepted the path to crucifixion and death. But these would not defeat him, and more importantly to his mission, these will not defeat us. By his wounds we are healed. Love is put on display, even as Pilate himself has the plaque placed over Yeshua's head so that all the world would know the kingship authority that Jesus brings to bear. Love is present in Jesus. Love given to us and to all authorities in this world as well so that the compassionate heart of service for others may find new roads into this world. And the cry of anger and abuse and death may finally come to an end in the fullness of Jesus' authority. Kim and Greg and I were in San Antonio for three days. We were exposed to COVID. That's why I'm here and there by myself. But I, I listened to authority, wore my mask. And we were there and we learned the focus of our, of our time together seemed to be the border issue but we also attended workshops to learn how we can use social media to connect with our community and promote our activities. Youth mission, local church mission planning, spiritual and emotional care in a disaster, working with the homeless, volunteer recruiting and retention, as well as a greater understanding of the General Board of Global Ministries. We may not think we are really affected by the border issue, but we can find new roads into our community so the cries of anger, abuse, and death will end, and we can continue to bring the fullness of Jesus' authority to this place. So, as a beginning, I want each of us, each of us, to reach out to one person in our own neighborhood and ask them, what do you like to do? Is that so hard? We were asked, who is your neighbor? I know my next door neighbors, but do I know who lives across the street from the church? One person, one family at a time, 
this week. Reach out to one person and ask them, what do you like to do? The only way we can know our neighbors is to, to reach out with a simple, genuine question and learn about them so we can connect with them in ways significant to their lives. We have a lot to offer. And I'm not talking about a smile. I'm not talking about the food in our hallway. I'm talking, I'm talking about our Savior. We come to the communion table because someone died for us. Someone reached out to us to tell us he loved us, even though we're not always lovable. Someone died to tell us our sins are forgiven, and that person is Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. In this Lenten season, as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, Let us look beyond our front doors and see who else needs to hear this message. Now let us stand and join our voices in stating our beliefs and our hope. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. In God, be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. So think. We're all sinners. All sinners. So think of the times when we fail to be an obedient church, we've not done God's will. We've broken the laws. We've rebelled against his love. We've not loved our neighbors. And we've not heard or even listened to the cries of the needy. So forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right that we come, remembering everything that God has done for us as his people. 
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'd like to invite the servers to come forward.
was a size four right through there. <clears throat> um, wait, you, I was brought to my attention that usually on the first Sunday of the month, we sometimes remember birthdays. And we have a birthday girl in our midst. So we're going to sing happy birthday. What do we usually say? We love you. We love you. But Janine Colson's our birthday girl today. But <laughs> So could we sing happy birthday? Please rise as you are able and join us in singing our closing hymn, number 140 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Go forth in his name, remembering to ask, what do you like to do? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.